Okay, so we are going to look at something called um Afi, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Uh a participant has enabled closed capturing. Okay. Yep. So um array of arrays in JavaScript. Array of arrays. Have you guys heard this term before? So this is the most as complex as, as it gets with the data structures, right? Array of arrays. And what does that even mean to you guys? Nobody want to try? List of this. I'm sorry? A list of lists. Perfect. List of lists. Lists. Yes, that's good. Uh, that's another way of putting it. Yep. So you have a list that contains other lists as, as um elements. So the elements of the list is a list itself. So this we call the multi-dimensional array. So you can create arrays where each element is an array by itself. So in the industry, most of the data set that would come to you to manipulate in the front end is gonna come in this way. It's gonna be an array, but the array contains other arrays in there. And um, you can think of it like, let's say this is an object. You see objects contain different uh, collection of data, right? So if you have an array of students, then every element of that array is going to also contain information about each student. Right? So for student number one, you're gonna have age, you know, country, of origin and all of that. So for each student in the student array, you're gonna have a collection of information about them. So in a typical software, mostly this is how your data set would come. And um, so as you know, our most important goal is to be able to assess the elements of the array so that we can change it or do something with it, right? So if you want to, if I do array of arrays at index zero, what do you think is going to come? Index zero contains this whole array. So that's why it's gonna print this array for you. But what if I want to print um, this element over here? I don't just want the whole the whole array, but I want to get to the data. Always you want to get to the data itself. So to get to this banana, you have to say array of arrays at position zero. So that's gonna return this. And then you now, what is the position of banana in this second array? One. So it's gonna be zero, one over here. Then that's gonna print banana for you. So like, if you look at the second one, second example here. So the array at position one, just what this one, and I'm printing the first element of that array. So you're getting that. Of course, once you have, you have the element in your hands like this, you can change it. You can do anything that we did to the single array. You can do them here too, right? So all that is important is that you have to go one step deeper in order to get to what you need. So what about iterating through an array of arrays? So you want to iterate through this array of arrays. Let's, pr let's print this and see. So, so this is a very short tutorial, very, very short. Um, but the point is made that you you have a data structure that is pretty complex. And um, yeah, I'm gonna leave this over here. Trying to 
we'll just replicate it later on. Um, Sorry. That's, I don't know the way I'm copying it, maybe that's why it comes here disorganized like that. But okay. so we have this one and we want to iterate through it. Um I mean it's just uh you're gonna need two for loop to do that. So the first time we just needed one for loop, now we need two for loops. Um Hopefully we can all see that. We can all see the necessity for the two for loops. But all that is happening is that <laughs> you go from for the for the first the outer array, you just start from i equals zero, i less than array dot length. This is the length of the array is zero, one, two. When you are looking for the length of the array, you do the proper count one, two, three. So this is going to give you three for this, and then you keep increasing. So the first for loop is gonna keep track of the first array. It's gonna begin when i is equal to zero, you're gonna be here at this array. And then now there is another loop inside here that is starting from j equals zero, j less than array dot length. But look, it's not array dot length, it's array i dot length. So array i, let's say i equals zero. If you put zero here, what is array at position zero? That's gonna give you this array. So if you check the length of that, this is gonna give you three also. I'll give you three here. And then j plus plus. Hmm. So as soon as you get to zero over here, the second loop is gonna kick in. And then you are saying console.log array of arrays i, which is the zero, and then J. So now this J will keep increasing until this loop is done. And then it will come out here. And then this I will increase to next position. And so it will come to this array. And then say I is equal to one, it's gonna put one here. That will be this array dot length. And then, so as soon as this is also done, then it will come out and then I will increase to that. You can watch the video and then just think about it um, until it sinks in um, because it's that simple, but it's as complicated as it gets. Like it doesn't get any complicated than this. As I told you that coding is all about the data. So if the data comes in as complicated this way, you still have to do what you gotta do. You have to look through it and do things. You can do the map, you can do a lot of things but you are just doing things one step deeper, you know? So of course, if I print this, you guess that it's gonna print all the elements in all the array, but there are different things you may wanna do. So starting from here, it will print all the elements in the first array and then the elements in the second one and then the elements in the third one. So this is how you're gonna iterate through something like this, okay? Any questions on this one? No. Mm -mm. Okay, let's try to look at this code, uh, this um, project. I'm just gonna create a new file and I'll explain why. So I'll get project.js. So this one, we're going to use it in a very different way. I realize that, you know, there are different, you know, projects. This one, the way the code is given, we want, we just want you, people to use it. You're going to execute this code in the command line. We don't, we are not going to execute it in the, in the browser. That's, it is so, so. <laughs> This code is crazy, but you guys would understand it. So that's all that matters. Mm -hmm. But before we try to go through this code, let's make sure that you guys really understand what we're doing here, right? Especially assessing the values and you know changing them and printing them and stuff like that. I'm sure we, we get that. So let's, 
see um, in this code. So in the console, we can just do console dot log and all of that, and we have no issues. But if we want to do that in the in the command line over here in the terminal, we needed to use this library. So library is a code that we didn't write. It's already written for us. We just have to bring it into our code. And then this is how you do it. Require. So the key, the title is called read, read, um, read line, reading line. So like it's going to allow us to take data from the console. Somebody can type in the console and we can read it. So console dot read line and all of those things. Um, you, we need this library to have that ability. And then once you have the library, you'd say, you write this code to say that I want to be able to take information inside through the, through the terminal. And I want to be able to give information out into the terminal. So that is what this line of code is doing. You don't need to learn this. It's just, they tell you that put it here because you just copy and put it there, you know? So what is important to us is this starting from here downwards. And uh, it's a very nice project here. And let's see how it works first before we try to understand it. Um, so if I want to execute this code in the terminal, um, let's try to make this bigger. So you just have to navigate to the folder that the code is in. We know we have it in JavaScript folder. So you just do CD. Uh, JavaScript, and then while I'm in there, I can clear this and do ls. These are all the files that are here. We see them here. So this is the one that we want to execute a project. So in the console, you just have to say node, node project, and then you hit. So now once we execute, it is asking, welcome to the quiz game. This is a quiz game. And it's asking you the first question. What is the capital of France? So enter the number of your answer. So capital of France is what? Is it London? Oh, let me pick London. I know it's not London, but I'll choose London. See, it tells you that's incorrect. And then it moves on to the next one. It doesn't allow you to try again. Which planet, which planet is known as the red planet? Red planet, do, do you guys know the answer to that? Mars. Mars, okay, let's see. So Mars is number two. And that's correct. Okay, that's good. Trust me, I didn't know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> so that's good. Now the next question, what is the largest mammal? Um, blue whale. Blue whale, oh, you are smart too. That's what do you think? I see elephants over there. I see hippopotamus. And blue well. Sorry? Same thing, three. Okay, that's awesome. Blue well. Turned out that's the right answer. And we got two out of three. This is the game we played. And of course, you can let them try again and all of that, but this code doesn't let them try again. But we're going to try to figure out how to let them try again and probably add more to the code. So you see the questions are popping out and all that. Oh, because we don't know functions, I think we're going to have trouble here. See, there's a, a lot of functions in here. Let's not go through this yet. Let's go back to functions, please. Otherwise, we're going to have a problem. Okay? So I want to make sure you guys really get it very quick. If you see me doing something here, you know why I'm doing it. Other than that, this won't help us. So let's go back to, to functions. I'm so sorry that uh, I... I place this um, this exercise before functions is done. So uh, I'm going back to functions. Can you imagine that, guys? I'm killing the surprise. I'm so sorry, guys. So again, functions, we've, we've seen functions before during the introduction to programming. There was a whole section on functions, but now we want to look at it closely from a JavaScript perspective. Um, and guys, we are almost done with the programming. Trust me, almost done. 
we, we are almost done with everything that we need to know to be able to write very complex code. Just reusing what we've done to do complex things, you know. So now a function, what is a function? Can somebody try to explain to me what a function is in your own way, your own words? So like back in the day, I'm sorry, I studied coding and we saw functions and looping and everything, conditionals, because I didn't understand them uh, fully. Like if you asked me to define it, I had no clue. If you asked me what is a loop, I had no clue. Conditionals, I had no clue. So that's why I couldn't code at all. But it was not until I was able to understand these concepts through my computer science education that it became easier for me to be able to write any code. Even, you know, so I don't want things to be crippling for us, you know? That's why I'm going this way. I'm, I'm trying to teach it this way so that you guys can easily understand the stuff. And once you get what they mean, I believe that they will not leave your mind ever, right? And um, once you know coding, any area of computer science that you go, data science, cybersecurity, whatever area that you go, you're going to see these concepts showing up over there. You're going to see functions. You're going to see array, list, object. you see them all over the place, and your life would be very, very easy. But you're like, oh, my God, I've seen this before. I know what that is, right? But let's try to understand them. Yeah. So I'm sorry if I cut you. I know somebody was trying to say something. What is a function? Nobody? Like the the um JavaScript version of a function or in general? In general, any language. Function is a function in any language, it's the same. Trust me. Don't really know how to explain, but in a function you you put a variable inside and it will produce a answer. Like I don't know how to like like f of x or something like that, you put a variable within it and then it is supposed to produce and result in an, in an answer. I don't know how to describe it per se, but yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh, I was saying that like a function, an example of a function is something like, F of, F of x or, or something like usually you put a variable within it and then mm -hmm. it's supposed to result in a in an answer in an answer yeah yes it's it's good very good uh definition let's look at it and then break it down it's very very good the way you said it mm -hmm. but uh now let's look at it again locally I just brought those examples over so we can just play with it. Now, you are using the f of x as an example. So now, see this one is mapping because it has y here. If we want to look at it as a function, just say f of x equals, say x, x plus two. Now this is a function. And what it means is that it takes a parameter x. x if x equals one, it's going to give you what? It's going to give you 1 plus 2, which is 3. If x equals, tomorrow if you say give it x equals 6, it will do the same, it will fire the same equation over here and give you 8, like that. So the function is, you can see, it's, this is very condensed. It's a condensed definition of something. And then later on, depending on the value you give it, it will produce something different at, uh, output. So that's a very good way of thinking about functions. When you are creating functions, you are trying to, at the end of the day, you can see you're just reusing the same thing. You're just reusing the same expression. 
So in code, sometimes the expression could be a lot. Um, you can have a lot of things in there. Like, why don't we just represent this one in a in the code first? So what we have out there, you can say function, give it a name, func. Uh, so this one is taking a parameter. So you put the parameter here and then the body. The body is the code that you want to keep happening. So I can say console.log. I don't need to use console.log. Like you are talking variable, I can say var result equals, what is the result? X plus two. It means whatever they put here, add two to it. And whatever you get, put it in the result for me. So once you have the result, what do you do? You say, well, print it. You, you don't need to print it. You can return it. It's all up to you. It depends on what the code is, what you are planning to do. So in this case, now this is a this everything we did up there, this is how it's going to look in code. So now there's something called calling the function. Calling. If you create this function here, does it do anything? It doesn't do anything, right? It's only it starts doing something when you pass a value to it. You pass x as one, and then it will give you this. If you pass x as six, then it's gonna give you that. So when you're doing this one here, we are saying that you are calling, you are calling the function this, or you are invoking the function. Calling the function and invoking the function at the same time. So do you guys understand what I said? Does it make sense? Yes. Okay, thank you. Now look at the benefit of using functions. Now, you, you see this code is there and it's automated now. So if you just say func, whatever name you give, we call it func. We could have used f. We could have called it f. Let's call it f, just so that things will, be, will make more sense. But we have it f. <laughs> so it's crazy for you guys to really see what's happening. Let me give it a real, well, just call it f. Just know that it could have been anything. The name of the function is up to you. You can call it anything. So if I say f of two, what is happening here is that I'm invoking this function. And I can just say f of f of nine. You can keep calling it as many times as you want. And look at how simple the code is. Imagine, imagine. If I didn't use a function, I would have had to write this three times. And each time I'm going to put a different number here, right? But because it is a function, can you see, I'm not repeating myself. There is no repetition of code. So in, co in programming, there is something called drive. You guys, have you heard this before? Drive principle. In interviews, they will ask you, what is the drive principle? It says, do not repeat yourself. Actually, do not, just say don't. Don't repeat yourself in that. Also, let me use that here so that it will not. See, dry principle means don't repeat yourself. In software interview, they can ask you to define it. So the way you don't repeat yourself in code is by using functions. It's one of the ways, one of the main major ways of doing that. So the other key word that you need to also know for your interviews is called solid principle. And solid principle, we're gonna look at it later on, maybe after the whole class is over. This is very complicated. It's not complicated, but it's very powerful. The moment you understand solid principles, then you're ready to pass an interview. And it's not easy to explain it at all. Um, mostly some of the backend languages, they give you all the tools you need to understand the solid principle. But the S stands for single responsibility. It means every function you create has to do only one thing. So let's just talk about the X only. And then, so you, it's not it's not smart to create one function and it's doing millions of things. So otherwise, what name are you gonna give it, right? So assuming this one is multiplying the X by two, you have to give a name here, say uh, squared, squared. You can say square, square number, square number. So when anybody who sees the name knows what the function is doing, but let's, if this function is doing something else in here, then what name do you give it, right? So any function you create should do one thing. 
So now if you are calling square function like this, square number, you know that you are going to square the number you put in there, right? So we put nine, you know, like that, you know, stuff like that. So we can execute this, but I think it's pretty. So now all I'm saying is that this is a function and all that functions do is that they allow you to write one code one time and then keep reusing it whenever you need it, right? And you do it in such a way that you are not repeating yourself. It helps you to prevent repeating yourself as you write code. Understood? Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And you can always compare this with the loop. They look like they're the same, but there's a subtle difference there. A loop is different. A function is just a plain code and in a code block can just keep reusing as many times as you want. You can call it in different parts of the code, you can call it anywhere in the code and it's still gonna do what it has to do. Okay, so let's go back. So a function parameter, the X is what we call parameter. So it's a parameter means it's a placeholder where you, when you are calling the function, you have to put something there. Like here, this function is greeting somebody. So if I'm greeting someone, it is nice if I know their name. So if you give the name of the person here, it's going to say, hello, Afi, hello, Justina, you know, just so you can give the name and then it's saying hello and it's skillfully adding the name that you gave it. So, um, of course, we talked about function calling. So greet, greet here is a function. It takes that parameter and it's going to output hello, Alice. Can you guys understand why this function here is producing this output? You see, I know I keep asking you guys this thing because I want to make sure you get it. It's so important. Because at the end of the day, that is the code. You are manipulating data, right? So if I call this function and I pass Alice, it's gonna print hello, Alice. Can you guys see why? Okay, so first of all, this one has a parameter. This one, has it got any parameter? No. No. So when you're calling it, it means you don't have to pass any parameter. It's not you don't have to, you can't pass any parameter because it doesn't, it's not expecting any parameter. And look at how static it is. It's, it just prints the same thing every time because it has no parameter, right? But because this one has a parameter, it allows you to be dynamic in what it prints out to you. And so the question I was asking, if I say greet, and then I pass uh, Tina here, yeah. this is going to print, it's going to print or output, it's going to output. Always think about input and output. We looked at that. It takes an input from you and it gives you an output. It's gonna say, hello, hello, Tina. It is very important that you tell me exactly what it's going to give you. Remember there are comments in there, it has to be there and all that. So this is what's, so the question is, can somebody explain to me why this is gonna produce this output? Can you see that link? Can you see why this function if you pass name here, it's going to stick it in here. And once I stick name in here, this whole expression is going to evaluate to this. Can you guys see that? You see it? You see it? So this is the concatenation, right? Mm -hmm. The concatenation. So the same question I'm asking you can is you can break it down to this. It will take Tina and it will stick Tina in here. Tina, we are passing it as a string, so it will come as a string also. And then put Tina here. Now, after this, then it's gonna evaluate. You know, we talked about all these expressions, they have to evaluate to something. So it will take this 
and then to take this one first and then add what is next to it is Tina. And then what is there again? There is no space. If I had put a space here, it would put a space before the exclamation sign. There is no space anyway. They're just saying, take this and stick it to the end of that. So that's how the code will produce this, right? It's, it's not rocket science. I think we understand it. Does it make sense? Yes. Okay. Okay. So when this thing ends, let's come back and finish the function and then we close. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. We'll just come back and finish the function and then if we can look at the code, that's fine. At the project within the same 40 minutes um, window, then that's fine also. So always don't forget, you create a function, you have to call it, okay? Okay? Okay. Okay, thank you. So now there's one more thing here called a return statement. Return statement. Sometimes functions will return something to you. Like if the function is adding two numbers, it's going to return the sum of the numbers to you. So the question is, how do you handle the number that it gives you back? You have to put it in something else. So you put it, it's a constant sum. You are calling the function. It's expecting two parameters. So you pass them. And then now sum is going to have the value of eight. Is there any questions here? Is there something we don't understand over here? No. Okay, so fun, thank you. Functions, they are useful in every language. It's a very powerful tool. Like you cannot not understand it. That's why I said that your confidence in coding should come when you can close your eyes, create variables in your head, and then understand what you're doing, and then create functions and use them, and then print something. If you can do these things, then you are really there. Then, of course, the other thing is going to be the loops, which we understand that there are different types of loops. So you learn one and stick to it. Sometimes you can change it, you know. Then conditionals. And then, guys, you guys are there, you know. It's not like there's anything else anywhere, you know, that complicated, you know. So now, because we are doing functions in JavaScript, JavaScript, they use functions for a lot of things. And they are very, very important in JavaScript. That's why we would, I will make sure we go, we look at everything that functions are used for. Because in JavaScript code, mostly they don't have classes over there. So you will see functions all over the place, functions. And they, they are magical that way. So over here, there's something called a function expression. So <laughs> an expression, what, has, what is an expression, right? So like you see this function here, we don't even end it. We don't put semicolon on it over here because it's not an expression. It's just a function by itself. But what if the other day we learned that a function will eventually give you a value at the end of the day. Like if you evaluate add, it's gonna return you some number or a data. So imagine, see here what we are doing. We are creating a variable called multiply and we are assigning a whole function to, to the variable. So we're able to do this because this function will eventually give you data or a value. So why can't you assign that value here? You can do it, right? So once you do it, we call this one function expression. Expressions that involve functions in there. It's like a statement of code that contains a function in it. Um, so this is just a key term, but we, the point is that we in JavaScript, you're going to see us creating a function and assigning the whole function to a new variable. But another thing that you should realize is that this, this when we do it this way, the function that we create, we don't give it a name. Can you see this function? Has it got a name over here? It doesn't have a name. So this one is called nameless function. <laughs> So JavaScript, I think it's only useful in JavaScript. It gives you the ability to have a function with no name. So at the end of the day, the name of the function is gonna be the variable name that you gave it. And um, you know, it's just a syntax change, right? Different ways of doing things. And in many 
software development code, you're going to see them using this syntax. And over here, the function only is doing one thing, but it could be doing many things. Many, you're going to see this code here, and the function is very big, but we're doing the same thing. Just, you know, don't be scared. Hopefully, we'll build a project with a big function like that. Um, so this is how we use it. You can say constant result equals multiply. See, this function is multiplying two things, right? So now the parameters, you pass them here, like this. Any um, questions? We have less than a minute. Okay, okay, thank you for the reminder. It looks like we will be able to finish this function with our name. See, this one is anonymous function. That's exactly what I just said. See, has it got any name? No name. So it's an anonymous function. It has no name. If you don't assign it to a variable, there is no way you can call it. I mean, there is a way to call it, and I'll show that down there. There's one, one way of calling it, calling a nameless function. And uh, of course, the bar, function bar, is, this one has a name. It's not a nameless function. So variable x equals function bar, that. So you have the notes here, guys. You can read it um, as well. Uh, when we come back, we're going to continue. I think that we're almost at about 